Hey guys, welcome back again to another Zeal Cigar Review. Today, very special, very, very special cigar review. And we're going to tell you why all next on the Zeal Cigar Review. It's special in two different ways. The first way is that we actually have the brand new sizes of the Red Sage. Now, JB, this is your baby. This is what you've wanted for so long in our shop. And we, we initially released it in a Robusto so that everybody could try the Robusto. But now we're releasing it in a Churchill and a Torpedo. And we've never smoked these yet. So in order to tell you the next big surprise that we have for you and how these smoke, you know what we got to do? We got to cut, light, and smoke. Well, as we're cutting these, let's talk about the email. We just got a pretty big email from somebody, right? Yeah, it was a big one. I read it, like, uh, I think this morning right before I came in. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get it till probably about... 20, 25 minutes ago. Yeah. Once in a while, you get emails from people that let you know how your cigar review impacts them. This was given to us by a guy named John, which says, his name is John. And uh, I think as I was reading it, and JB was listening to the reread yeah, version. Yeah, I knew what was coming. Um, I don't know that either of us had dry eyes as we were. No, how as we were, you, yeah. You can't. Yeah, so uh, yeah. a lot of times, guys. We are just so blessed to smoke cigars with you and to tell you little insights about our lives or about the business or about cigars that we forget that sometimes this, this time that we have with you really impacts people's lives at certain points. I think we forget that because we're so busy with business and everything else like that. When, when we don't really find our value through our social media fame in some sort of way, right? Yeah. yeah. It, 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 it is a little easy to kind of take for granted how much impact you can have on people when you do stuff like this because it does become you know we want a day here want a day here want a day here new cigar do the review um I'll, I'll be honest we probably take it for granted a lot less than probably a lot of other people do or we don't take it for granted probably a lot less because we are very reflective and appreciative i mean i just did a video yesterday right, uh, right. explaining how appreciative we've been of our customers even just these last couple weeks mm -hmm. and then we get an email like this and that just solidifies it so um i would say it is easy to kind of take that for granted sometimes but uh, we do a really good job of trying not to and that's why you're getting two videos in a row that are just basically customer appreciation yeah and there's when you do this so long um this is probably my eighth year being on youtube um that's when you it, bro when you're you, older than that i don't know man yeah uh, you uh, you reflect on the the things that people say, and uh, the ways they impact you, and the ways they impact your family, in particular, and you end up uh, you do fall in love with your customer base. We really, we really do love and uh, care about our customer base uh, in ways I think uh, that I, I think it sometimes. Uh, I get called a bad business owner. Yeah, it's, it's not for good that. for business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I care so much more about people over profits. I really do. Um, that, that's, that's not to say that I don't believe in profits. I don't believe in business. Obviously, we do. And uh, But I think there's a, a sense of when... Um, when things happen to uh, your customer base, not because you're um sad to lose them or uh sad to uh maybe not make it make make someone happy in what they want but because uh you really do care genuinely about them as people and not just as numbers um example we had two customers die this year uh yeah, that were did. that are that are customers and that um one that was on video at one point um if you guys remember the the star wars guy mike that, that did the Star Wars thing with me. Had his jacket on. Yeah, Rode, yeah, yeah. Did he ride a bike down when he yeah, came we did, down? Yeah, we did a Spice Cream. Yeah, we did, we did a Spice Cream episode together, and uh, he passed away um, uh, tragically really quick. We had another friend of ours of the shop come in, and uh, Stan, we've mentioned several times on the video, uh, passed away this year. Uh, I'd love to tell you, like, it just doesn't phase us because we, we're just so concerned about business. It's not true. It does phase us. And uh, we do care about uh, our customer interaction and uh, uh, how we bless people, you know, in uh, in the cigar industry, particularly our customer base. Uh, so um, 
we're gonna light these up, and it's it's we have we have two cigars here, and so uh, we will first want to say thank you to John and his kind words. I could not read you the letter, and I'll tell you why. It's ridiculously long, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I was very very appreciative of the detail that you went into, John, on the letter letter, but um, there's no way to it would take 15, 20 minutes to read the letter, to be quite honest. Um, and a lot of it was just, just thanking Zeal, for, Zeal Cigars and what we do with the podcast and the, the videos and everything else like that. But uh, I, I'll say this before we get into this. Um, and this cigar is aptly named Red Sage after, like, the, uh, the wisdom, you know, that you can get in just smoking a cigar and by the conversations that you have over smoking a cigar. It's a beautiful Corojo. I will say that uh, today we get we have an, we have an opportunity to smoke these in honor of two men that we've lost and um, all of all of you customers out there that have gone through struggles and things like that and have emailed us and told us about the struggles. We have prayed for you. I promise you, we have prayed for you. I pray for you privately. I pray for you even publicly with JB and some of the other people around here once in a while. And uh, from the bottom of our hearts, um, I want to say this: uh, we absolutely wholeheartedly appreciate and cannot tell you enough thank you for making zeal cigars a part of your youtube journey and your journey in cigars and with that said it's time to get in the cigars i forgot the the robusto was a shaggy foot yeah not not shaggy foot but a close foot pretty much close yeah, yeah. close foot so i want to draw on this ahead of time and uh it didn't draw well it didn't draw well so now yeah not draw fine Mmm. Mmm. Oh, wow. This is my first cigar of the day, and uh, this is this is JB's pet project. I'll say that. And it's a... Uh, it's our first Zeal House brand, uh, Corojo. Mm-hmm. Corojo. And the, if, I, if I'm correct, the Robusto... Have this beautiful baker spice in in it, and the sweet kind of baker spice that was very unique to it. At the very front end of this, I'm getting nuttiness, dude. Strong nuttiness. I don't know what the torpedo is like. Churchill, just beautiful, like. Nah, it's a dirt. It's a dirty, woody, nutty. Little sweetness so far. I oh think yeah. It gets sweeter if I remember. Yeah, it's very sweet. I got I got the sweetness right away. Like a sweet, yeah, a sweet nuttiness, dude. When when you say dirty, you're talking about earthy, right? Like an earthiness, yeah. a little bit of earthiness. Woods, okay. Earthy, earth notes, wood notes, musky. This mm. one's not musky though, really. Mm. But it's got that dirty, earthy. But it's got that spice, that beautiful spice in there. It's Even unique. from the very like first inch in there the vir the virgin inch is what i call it it's like uh it's just great it's like your perfect 50 50 corojo mm. right it's not like too smooth of a corojo but it's not like the camacho one that like punches you, you in the face you nailed it dude yeah you nailed it i i'd, I'd say like the the woodwind hills you know uh de is it is it deranged which is their uh corojo that's the sweetest, mayhem. lightest one. The mayhem. The mayhem. The, the mayhem, which is their sweetest, lightest one. Which is crazy, because um, that Gordo is one of the few that's actually made me a little dizzy. Mm-hmm. But, but that's your sweet, that's your sweet and, like, really creamy. Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, you have the Camacho Corojo, which was, like, just rough and, you know, spicy and everything else like that. This is right in between the two. A little bit of that bready, almost graham crackery note. Yeah. <laughs> your palate's picking it up great, dude. Yeah. I would just I, I would say that for me the most prominent notes on this are, is the nuttiness and the baker spice. Those are the two things that I'm that I'm getting more than anything. And that's not pepper necessarily. The pepper on this is not necessarily really strong. No, I'd say on the retro hail, it's like you get the the smell of mm. the red pepper flake, mm. but you don't feel it. Yeah, there's very little very little like burn or pepper. You know what I like the most about this so far, though? What's that? If you stop and you don't take a puff for a minute, your mouth stays flavorful for quite a while. Yeah, it's got a long finish. It has a very, very long finish. It's very good, though. How's the draw on the Churchill? Perfect. It's got an absolute perfect draw. With that close foot, I was worried. and that, yeah, I mean, when you lit it, you lit it. It was perfect. So The ash is hanging on there nice. And you're right. When you're, when you're finished smoking it, and letting it sit there for a little bit, the 
finish of this is long, nutty, uh, baker spice is there, the sweetness is still there. Little bit of leather, but not much. <laughs> I'm not normally a torpedo fan, bro, but this isn't this yeah. isn't uh, changing the way that I feel about the cigar at all. I I'll say this. Uh, I, I think that I think the Churchill's better. Really? Than the Robusto. Yeah. I think the Churchill's hmm. I I it felt like in the Robusto, I had to smoke a little bit more to get some more sweetness. I feel like the sweetness, which makes sense because it, there's more there, and the sweetness is hitting it a lot quicker, mm. you know, at, at the front end, which is really genuinely pleasant. Mm. Yeah, right about here is where the sweetness kicked in for me. I just retrohaled that, and it was, oh, man, super good. I really, mm. <laughs> I really enjoy this thing, dude. Oh, yeah. There's a reason I've been wanting it in for a while. Well, guys, we're going to come back and tell you what the second third of this tastes like. Just one second, so be right back. All right, guys, we're back, and we are into basically the second third of the cigar, which is graciously developing sweeter than the first third. Uh, I'll say that the, the two notes, of maybe three notes that I have more than anything, uh, that sweetness on the ret retro hill, the nuttiness, and I will say a distinct, that baker spice. These are the three ones that I get. The, the baker spice comes out more almost like a... When you say graham cracker or a nugget, something like that, a little bit, a little bit of that, but mostly the nuttiness and the uh, the, the sweetness. To be, okay. to be honest. So, what about you though? You were saying some, you got some notes yeah, in there. Yeah, picking up a little bit more, some little bit more of like some leathery notes. Um, I even got like some light notes of like salted pretzel. Oh, okay. Here and there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So th there's definitely some complexity in here that you can get into if you really, if you really think about it. Hmm. Mm. I can't believe how good this ash is holding on. Yeah. I, I don't like my ash, and I'm coating my cigar, so I'm smoking it fast. But you're right. It's right. It's a medium Corojo. It leans a little yeah. full, but mm. not much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, like, if you're here medium, it's like, do do do. Yeah, just a, just a slight... A little, little a notch slight, over. Slight bit above medium, if you would, to the fullness. But even that, it's not peppery. You know, it's just full of flavor, and I mean... It's more pronounced in the flavor than it is any of the pepper or anything else. Yeah, it's not really offensive in the mouth. You can get a little tingle in the in the retro hill every once in a while. Yeah, but that, but that woodsy nutty sweetness on yeah. the retro hill is just it, with that baker spice. The baker spice comes out. What I f feel is mostly on the finish. Okay, like when you're done tasting your mouth, it's just incredible. It really. All is. right, hear, hear me out. Right, mm -hmm. where the Timberwolf gets like really sweet and chocolatey yeah this one is like it's like car like caramel salted caramel brother okay okay like younger brother you're on that salted caramel thing you're it, like it, it, it's got some i don't i don't get a lot of salty notes out of cigars mm -hmm. uh there's i think one cigar i smoked that i got some like salty note out of and it might have been uh something that one of the reps gave me to smoke generoso right? was it the generoso had like a salty caramel of yeah, the, I remember the, that. The Fierro Tego? Fierro Tego Generoso. Yeah. They had like a salty caramel. We probably said that wrong again. <laughs> sorry, Michael. It's the hillbillies, bro. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. It's the Ohio Indian. Dude, people liked Michael, man. Yeah, Michael's great, dude. Herklot? Like, they had, Herklots? They, they had a lot of Herklots. Can't, I can't even, I can't even pronounce his name right. I'm so sorry about that, Michael. But, I mean, it's, yeah, he had a great, he was incredible, man. He was dude, a great people guest. People really liked what he had to say about mm -hmm. how he looks at cigars and the way that he thinks about things. And uh, that, that was super cool to hear, uh, to, to to have somebody like that on here also uh, make people feel some type of way about that. Right, you know what I right. mean? Well, he went through the comments. Oh, and, th and thanked yeah, everybody how, for the how, comments. Yeah, how many manufacturers or people who never had on here that actually... Never do that. Yeah, they, they were... I mean, even ones that were rusing him. There yeah, was dude. one that had like... Uh, it was like... Uh, couldn't think of a username or something like that. And they made a joke about... He looks like he's fun at parties. And all he commented was, I can think of a username. <laughs> <laughs> But, like, yeah, dude, nobody does that. So, like, yeah, big dude. thanks to you for also, like, that's supporting us as well. Yeah, like, dude, so. absolutely. Yeah, dude. Lots way to be, lad. Way to be. Last week was cool, man. Mm -hmm. that, was a, that was interesting. We had a great week last week. We had a great week this week. It's been incredible and so on and so forth. I, several old friends came back into town, got a chance yeah, to connect with true. them. Yeah, Yesterday was busy. That was incredible. Uh, yeah, yesterday was. It, it's one of those things that while we're in business and so on and so forth, we do take these little breaks for guys that we impact or influence or whatever else like that. And several young men came in Ooh, yesterday. Yeah, several young men uh, with their uh, significant others came in just to say, "Hey, thanks for encouraging me." You know, and so yeah. like, that was really cool to see them. And you know, I was, I was, yeah, I was, I was like, and then my, and then my mentor Travis 
was in the room. So like you see like these guys I've mentored, I'm looking over at Travis. I'm like, that's your great, that's your grandfather right there, man. Cause that's my, that's my mentor, you know, and so on and so forth. So it's always good. Talk about, talk about red sage and wisdom. It's always good to have mentors. It really is guys. It's always good to find someone that is further ahead in life than you are, you know, in any way that you need, you know, mentally, physically, and spiritually, and then ask them like, for wisdom like what's going on man how did you get to where you are i'm really curious about that that's so important and so on and so forth and then guys if you're older to find somebody that you can pour into and say man i want to want to bless you i want to help you and everything else like that and develop whether it's your cigar game or business or life in general just awesome to do i want to know because mm-hmm. these are fresh off the boat mm-hmm. yeah it just came in yeah i want to know how much that woodiness is could potentially age out of these if they sat for a little while. I imagine the wood, the the woody, the sweetness. Because I mean, they're not super fresh, so if, fresh, but like. Let's say, let's say if they're, let's say if they're aged like a year from now. Yeah. I bet, I bet more sweetness comes out. Okay. And maybe a little less wood and more baker spice. You think it's a little bit more? I spice think so. To well, it. I mean, okay. we can we can figure that out. Let's put one in the humidor well, for a year. Sure. Next year, we'll smoke it and see if it, you know, comes out that way. It ain't gonna make it till next year. Yeah, that's true. There's a lot of cigars that we, we did definitely probably, what I do with I'm never going to smoke it, and I smoke it anyways. What I do with a lot of our cigars that we bring in that I really enjoy is I'll buy one from the, like a 10-pack from the first batch, mm-hmm. and I'll uh, I'll set it aside and just save it. So like I still have a couple Rhapsodies. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, the throwback. I have some Storm Chasers. Oh, the throwback. Oh. Yeah. I don't, I might have a couple Cocos, but they're unlabeled, so I'd have to, it, it would be a... Yeah, it's 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 hard to not smoke cigars. It is. It's a difficult. It's such a hard world we live in. I right still now. have a Vipe and a Mav. Do you really? I have one of each left. Yeah, dude. So it's like, man. So I'll probably get a few of these and age them, especially since I've been, uh, you know, something I've been kind of bugging you to bring in. <laughs> I can't believe how well this is burning, dude. Look at that ash, dude. The ash is on point. Well, guys, we're gonna. Smoke this down to the final nub and or the final third and come back and tell you what we think about it in just one second. So be right back. That's right. What are you, E.T.? JB was holding out on me. So let's see how this pair. You'll choke on them. Let's see how this pairs with the Corojo. You ever eat Reese's Pieces before? Mmm. Remember when they came out? It's all E.T. in the theater. Mmm. This piece is so good. I'm not going to lie. Extraterrestrial stuff probably scared me the most as a kid. And I was terrified E.T. was going to come try to get my Reese's Pieces. I'm not kidding. Dude, it, it, <clears throat> this literally brought out ridiculous amounts of nuttiness in this. Really? Which, yeah, yeah. Did it make it spicier at all? Hmm. Because when I did the Reese's yesterday with the Buckeye Land, it made it a little bit spicier. No, just nuttier. Very, very nuttier. I think it gets. I think it gets a little more spicy, anyways, towards the end. I could purge it. That takes off a little bit of the edge. Yeah, purging it towards the end takes off a little bit of the edge. Still, generous amounts of sweetness, generous amounts of like that baker spice that we're talking about, and uh, it's really got a nice nutty woody taste near the end as well. Very very pleasant. The sweetness. Hangs on, and I'm in the final third and loving every bit of it. Really, really good. I, my personal opinion, just me personally, everyone else has a different opinion. I think the Churchill is the best, but I haven't had the Torpedo yet. So what are your final thoughts on the uh, Torpedo? I'm liking it, man. It's It stayed pretty consistent with what I remember smoking from the Robusto. Okay. I, I can't honestly tell you if I like one over the other okay. at the moment, but um, yeah, man, I... The more and more I smoke this, the more and more I'm glad that uh, it's it's here. Yeah, it's a very, very good cigar. The Red Sage is a winner in my mind. JB, well done. Great job. I should have listened to you sooner. And obviously, it's an incredible cigar. Well, I don't know if you guys had the Red Sage yet or not. If you have, drop a comment below and let us know what you thought about it. And for the Zeal Cigar Review, I've been Bradley. This is JB. And we're out of here, as always, like last year. Peace.